In today's video, we're doing a private tour of the oldest public aquarium in the United States. I'm really excited to check this out, so let's dive right in. I drove five hours from Chicago to Detroit to film some awesome locations. It was actually my first time visiting Detroit, and this was my second stop. My first video was a tour of Cunningham Cichlids in the Detroit suburbs, and I got to see Josh's basement fish room which had 94 tanks and a lot of very cool cichlids. I would go check out that video after this one as it was pretty awesome. I continued on to downtown Detroit and took in some of the city. The next day it was time to check out another incredible place, the Bell Isle Aquarium. After crossing the bridge to the island, I finally arrived at the oldest aquarium in the United States. This public aquarium is interesting for many reasons that we'll touch on throughout the tour, but a few highlights coming up are seeing some monster cichlids, behind the scenes of the filtration, and the octopus. What? <laughs> you did hear that right, we're going to be hanging out with an octopus, which was probably the highlight of my trip. First of course are the awesome exhibits. Belle Isle Aquarium is free to the public and it was busy on this Saturday. Built all the way back in 1904, the aquariums themselves did not look dated and I thought the setups looked great. The first big tank when you walk in had giant karami, clown knives, and some large gar. Let's check out some more of these awesome exhibits before going behind the scenes. Some of my favorite exhibits other than the cichlids included the piranha tank which had some massive full grown piranhas. I also love this huge snapping turtle. We don't show turtles too often on this channel but when I do, I gotta say, I like turtles. Maybe I need a turtle tank in the future. And then fitting for the oldest aquarium to have a display from one of the oldest fish, the sturgeon. Towards the end, they also have some cool saltwater setups as well with some interesting creatures, but none cooler than the octopus. This is obviously the front of the exhibit we're looking at right now, so keep that in mind for later in the video. Now that we've seen these awesome exhibits, let's go check out what keeps these running smoothly, the people that work on these tanks. We're going to talk to Amanda, who is the senior aquarist here, and apologies in advance if some of the audio is a little muffled. It is pretty loud when you're running so many tanks. Okay, so we are here with Amanda from Bella Isle Aquarium. Can you explain just how this filtration works back here? So we have two filters on all our tanks. We have a sand filter. This is their typical, just like a pool. It keeps the water nice and clear. We also have something called a biofilter. And in the biofilter, we have all kinds of media that have beneficial bacteria that will break down the ammonia. So do you have one of these on each of the different exhibits? Yeah, so in our aquarium, all of our exhibits are actually separate. In some aquariums, I know they're all together, but we're on separate systems, so each tank has its own filtration. Do you do that for any specific reason, or is it just easiest to do it that way? Well, it's just the way that the tanks were built. Um, we have been open in 1904, it's a very old building, and so we work with what we got. But also a benefit of that is if there's something wrong in a tank, or there's some sort of uh, disease or something, that the tanks are isolated, so that is helpful. So each of these different exhibits, how old would you say they are? Um, well, the tanks themselves, I think they probably rebuilt these cement tanks in the 50s. 
Um, but the whole building itself is 19 before, and there's been lots of updates since then. But the sand filters are only from the last few years. This is something that we've actually added. And with all these different exhibits, do you do like water changes, or how does that work with all these? So we usually do water changes about once a week on all our tanks, around 25%. Depends on how our nitrate levels. We do water quality testing to make sure the nitrates in one year are good, and we'll base our water changes off of that. You have to clean out these filters often as well. Uh, actually, the sand filters don't need to, the sand in them doesn't really need to be changed every like one to 10 to 15 years. Um, wow. But the bio filters, the, all the different media on top, every once in a while I will take out some of the um, filtration stuff and rinse it. Um, but they don't even need to be cleaned that off. Do you also feed through the back of the tank here? Yeah, for so all the um, we do all our feeding up here. In fact, today is feeding day, so I'm sure they're all waiting uh, <laughs> patiently. Uh, but yeah, all the feeding is yeah. in the back. What's uh, the biggest challenge with all these different exhibits? I can tell you the biggest challenge for me is outside we have one Pope Pagoda that has tanks in it. And unfortunately those tanks are very difficult to get to because of the way that it's built. And I only can have access to the top. And so these tanks have their little bit of challenges, but that is the biggest challenge. And that was built in the 1950s, obviously for aesthetics, not for Aquarius. <laughs> In terms of the uh, maintenance and the workers here, is it just between a couple people or how does it work? Yeah, so our crew, uh, the animal care team, consists of Paul, our curator, uh, myself, I'm the senior aquarist, and Jory, who is our other aquarist. Uh, we do have interns and volunteers at times, but it's really just us three uh, running it, which is a lot of work, but it's fun. <laughs> that is a lot of work between three people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the exhibits look great. So you guys are doing a great job here. These are salt tanks. These are the most amazing tanks. We're too old. Um, so we have a little bit of a setup for us. More active than most, which is cool. Yeah. Hey, buddy. I'm going to come see you. We're going to help you. Yeah, come see. There he is. Oh, hello. So how often do you do this? Every day, sometimes twice a day. <laughs> um, it depends on his mood. Like sometimes, I know you're sticking to me now. Um, sometimes he's like, see you. Um, some days he wants a lot of attention, and then other days he doesn't want to come out of his cave. And I'm finding it's kind of like an every other day thing with him. Yeah. Like, and that's fine. We go by his moods, um, what he wants, and what he wants to eat. You want this? You want this? Do you not want this today? Oh, you do. Okay. And he's really like he, with the jar thing. He doesn't like to open jars. And I don't know if it's because he can't figure it out or he's just really lazy. Mm -hmm. And anything like that rubber dog toys, there's one oh, up there I'm not going to get. He so loves those. Um, he'll carry them around like a teddy bear. We got him to climb out into a cup. We put him in a separate tank that we had a holding. We cleaned it. We redid it. And can you want this? It's, this like is, oh, first you want that? There you day. Yeah. Was he way smaller when you Oh, God. He yeah, was totally and he's going to get big. He's a male, so they actually get bigger. Yeah. Because they're a skate artist, right? Oh, yes. Oh, you're gonna squirt us. He has squirted us before. <laughs> Do you have to firmly shut the lid for this guy? Yeah, so yeah. they're on, I have lock, it's on lock, locking mechanisms and everything. So that was awesome to see the behind the scenes of the filtration and what keeps all these different exhibits up and running. It was pretty shocking to hear that only three people work here to really make sure all these exhibits look great and all the fish are happy and healthy. It's a lot of work for three people, but it is a public aquarium and there is no entry fee to get into this aquarium. They only really accept donations. So if you are interested in that, I'll leave a link down below to their website. But definitely a highlight was playing around with that octopus who was so intelligent and interesting interactive. I've already said I wanted to get a turtle tank, but might as well add an octopus tank to the list as well. Okay. Do it. Mm -hmm. Do it. But also behind the exhibits, they have some holding tanks where fish are either growing out, getting medication, or just needed to be placed in a different tank for whatever reason. And although this building is over a century old, they do have a ton of space back here for all these different holding tanks. It seemed like everywhere I looked, there was another tank or tub holding fish either getting ready for the exhibit or getting medication or just finding a better fit for them long term. But even though this is the oldest aquarium in the United States built in 1904, it really didn't seem all that dated. I did really like the ceiling of this facility being that lime green color. It was a unique touch that kind of maintained its history while all the exhibits themselves were definitely up to date. 
and they had some huge fish in these tanks and hopefully if you're considering any of these types of cichlids or other fish you consider how big they are in these exhibits and then consider if your home aquarium is even going to be big enough to keep them. One of those that always surprises me is the silver arowana for how big it gets. It's really not feasible for most home aquariums and there are many other fish like that in these exhibits. But again, I really enjoyed seeing all that Bell Isle Aquarium had to offer, all the history, all the different exhibits that have been updated over that time. Another big thank you to them for giving us a behind the scenes tour. And this is just the second video in my little Detroit travel series here. The next episode will be coming very soon. If you have any suggestions for other locations I should go film, it is going to be a big part of the channel moving forward is just going and traveling and showcasing everything that's out there in the aquarium hobby on top of just our own home aquariums. We're going to highlight those like we always do, but plenty of exciting content to come. Make sure to leave a comment down below what you think about that. Hope you enjoyed seeing that tour. It was an awesome aquarium with some really cool exhibits. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.